de favela A baila, é baile de favela The only thing I can tell you is that Sarah had indeed changed. In your opinion, why would your mother remain in hiding over several weeks? You must leave me alone now. I have agreed to everything, even to... But you do realize your mother will have to accept the consequences of her acts. I hope that your search will prove successful and bring Sarah back to us soon. I'll be leaving now because whatever it is you're up to, I do not want to know. Since then, we have become one and the same. We have officially erased the identity of my sister Emma. Emily Hillsborough. The woman with two faces. Everyone seems to be a little unnecessarily heated. Don't forget where you are, please. is about to start any minute. This is not the time to be... Damn it. What's going on? Uh, I, I don't know exactly, Mr. President. I was looking for my mother and I, I came upon this body. My God. You don't think Sarah did it, do you? Unfortunately, I'm afraid I... How awful. What has your mother gotten herself into now? <sighs> if only I knew, Mr. President. If no one saw you, I'd advise you not to get involved, Louis, so that no one will accuse you of the murder. Ah, oh, darn, the conference is starting. Time is of the essence. Sort this out and join us as quickly as you can in the conference room. Everyone will be expecting you. Mr. President, this is not really the right time, and I, I didn't come for that. Your mother's seat cannot remain vacant. You must replace her while she's still missing. Your mother and I were to support Mortar on this project. I don't know what the subject is, but the future of our countries depends on it. Given the importance of all this to Mortimer, he won't let the conference begin without you. So if you don't want more servants coming looking for you, I'd advise you to join us quickly and to put a brave face on it. The best favor you can do for yourself, Louis, and for Sarah, is to come and support Mortimer's project at the conference. Look, I don't mind following you, but I should warn you, I have no idea what this is all about, so I can't make any promises as to what I might do. I shall make my decision after the debate, when the time comes. Ah, very well. As you wish. You will see once you hear everything. But, given the situation, I think you will have everything to gain by joining Mortimer's side. I'm going. Don't be long. Tell them that I'm on my way. Oh, he's dead. What the hell's been going on here? Somebody smashed it in the back of his head with something. He slowly bled to death. That isn't what killed him. They broke his neck. Hmm. Let's see what secret's hidden under these masks. His face doesn't ring a bell. I'm a bit disappointed. Might have expected more from Lord Mortimer. Mother, if this is your doing, the situation is getting worse and worse. Well, the gate is locked. An old blanket. From the looks of it, it couldn't have kept her very warm. Someone's made a fire here. 
and the ashes are still warm. If you're the one who did it, Mother, it couldn't have been easy with only one hand. I must have just missed her. If only I hadn't wasted so much time getting out of Lord Mortimer's study. Leftover food? Ugh, not exactly fresh. Must have been here for a while. A ruble. The song of Roland. With a fragment of amber. Monsieur de Richet, you're the only one missing at the corner. Please join the guests. Mr. de Richet, you are expected at the conference. Please take the door to your left to join the guests. My son, glad you're here. It seems Lord Mortimer has been waiting for you to arrive before beginning. What a pity your mother isn't here for the conference. I hope I'll be able to see her before I leave. I still have a very important letter to give to her. Feeling all right, Louis? You look like you're miles away. Everything's fine. Don't worry. Lord Mortimer wants to talk to you, Louis. Don't make him wait. I don't know if you ever found what you were looking for in the garden, but Mortimer is waiting for you. I suggest you get a move on. You say it as if you were afraid of him. I sense that you have things you'd like to say, but something's holding you back. 
What is going on between you two? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I believed in him. I followed him to the best of my ability. I championed his ideas, defended his decisions, and then, without even realizing it, I became lost. The siren song, Monsieur de Richet. You wake up one morning, not knowing where you are, and you think about everything you've done for a man who wasn't even worth it. For a man who has no respect for you, who uses you, and who drops you as soon as he no longer needs you. For me, it's too late now. But you, you still have a choice. Don't respond to his call, sir. And he could not help answering her, but she said he seemed quite angry at being spewed. I am astonished, my dear. Cash. Your conjecture is totally wrong, I assure you. I have suspected it for a some chest time, with a motif no, representing the alchemical symbol of water. I have already told her so once, by your desire. Are you quite sure, sir? Is there not a little mistake somewhere? Yes, because she asked him at last, and he could not help answering her, but she said he seemed quite angry at being spoken to. But it is not sound, you know. That's... Good evening, gentlemen. Are we ready? The much awaited conference is about to begin? That is what we have all been waiting for. I believe that Lord Mortimer wishes to speak to you before it begins. You should go and see him. Are you quite sure, sir? Is there not a little mistake somewhere? Yes, because she asked him at last. And he could not know that. She's not acting by design, is she? Not as a representative. But with respect to any other legal characteristic, I do not imagine that much has been unfolded. Your plan is a good one. She's not acting by design. Ah, Louis, I've been expecting you. Uh, thank you for joining us. We are about to begin our conference. Let me explain what is at stake. Thank you kindly, but what do you expect of me exactly? My mother's the one who's supposed to attend, not me. That is indeed what was initially intended. Unfortunately, she still hasn't been found, and my guests can't stay here indefinitely. The conference must begin, and it would be truly beneficial to the Order to join in the project. Consequently, I would like you to replace her during her absence. What is at stake here is of the utmost importance. It's important that the French Order gets their say. And should you need any advice, don't worry, you are not alone, Louis. Very well. Can you give me a brief explanation of the aim of it all? Of course, Louis, I was coming to that. The aim of these meetings is to bring together the most influential people in order to think together about the future. But the future of who? Of the world, Louis. Our desire is to steer the destiny of our respective countries for the good of all and to no longer suffer the random hazards of history. In concrete terms, how do you organize your discussions? A conference is always organized the same way. There are two masters of ceremony who determine an important subject. You and Sir Gregory, I presume? Exactly. We shall be the masters of ceremony. It was our obligation to each bring to the table several guests in order to debate a subject. Once the debate is closed, a decision will be made by a vote of all the participants. By a unanimous vote. If the project is not agreed on by all, then it will be rejected. And neither of the two masters of ceremony have the right to vote. It's up to the guests alone to decide, Louis. In other words, us. Gregory and myself are merely the go-betweens. Finally, if the project is validated, each guest goes home and starts working to make it happen. It can take years. Do you often hold this kind of society dinner? In general, once a year, but in actual fact it tends to be events that dictate our gatherings. How long have you been active? Oh, this tradition has more or less always existed, Louis. It has continued from generation to generation. Can you give me an example of an event that was decided here before being implemented in the outside world? Well, take the French Revolution. 
It was decided right here two years before its implementation in France. Concerning the case of the French Revolution, I wasn't invited. But as far as the American Revolution is concerned, Louis, I can testify that we planned it five years before implementing it, for example. Louis, let me keep you a moment. I would like to let you in on a secret before we begin, because I'm going to need your assistance. You see, the project I'm going to present concerns the territory of Louisiana in North America. It's currently Spanish territory, and I'm going to make the proposition to the Assembly for it to become French. But how does that concern me? Well, you see, I prepared this project with your mother. We began thinking about a crazy idea. Unfortunately, Sarah went missing before getting the bigger picture. I don't intend to stop at Louisiana. My idea is to increase the territory of the United States. The first stone of this vast project consists of getting Spain to Louisiana to France. Once it becomes French, France will hand it over to the United States, which will then allow them to double the size of their territory. And that's where you come in. France and the United States, hand in hand. Two democracies illuminating the world. Lord Mortimer, I'm sure you're aware that Louisiana is hardly prime quality land. I wouldn't be exaggerating to call it marshland. How is acquiring land they won't know what to do with going to strengthen the United States? Think further, Louis. The United States won't stop there. Once they've acquired Louisiana, nothing will stop them. All they would have to do then is keep pushing toward the West to take the whole North American continent. So you intend to get rid of the Spanish? They are purely transitory. This is the settlers' home. It is natural for them to want to develop their nation to become one of the greatest powers of this world. As for the Spanish, there are just a handful of them actually on site. And if need be, we'll see to it that they are sufficiently occupied in Europe so that their focus is not on the North American continent. Moreover, Spain rarely only cares about its colonies in South America. It's hardly my fault if they are not capable of seeing the potential in the North American territories. The concept of royalty is from bygone times. It is time to lead the way to democracy. Take a look at them. Apart from President Washington, they all belong to monarchies. Do you really think they won't resist? Of course they'll fight, fearful as they are of losing their precious privileges. But the world needs visionaries, like you like your mother. It's a pity Sarah isn't here to see it. She only knew about a tiny part of the project. I hope I can count on you, Louis. It's time to start now. I must ask you to keep it to yourself for the time being. Take a seat, follow the discussions. We will have an opportunity to catch up later and you'll be able to let me know your thoughts. My friends, I propose we get started. First of all, I would like to thank you for taking the time to come. The honor is ours, my lord. As per our custom, here we are all together to discuss the face of tomorrow's world. Even though there may be certain tensions between our nations, I must ask you to keep an open mind. As Sarah de Richet is unable to be among us, please welcome Louis de Richet, who will represent the Golden Order and will vote on its behalf when the time comes. Welcome among us, Louis. 
Welcome, Monsieur. I hope he'll be more effective than his mother regarding the protection of the King of France. The order has proved particularly inefficient. Come, oh, Manuel, you're not going to spoil our visit. The order's mission was not to protect King Louis XVI, as far as I am aware. We are talking about the King of Divine Blood, for goodness sake. It seemed obvious to me he needed protecting. If the Golden Order wants to pride itself on being an influential organization, it should have kept him alive. Thank you all. I am honored to be among you today. I will strive to represent the interests of the Order as best I can. Perhaps we may begin, Lord Mortimer. Certainly. I have a dream that our nations will continue to support each other, more now than ever before. A dream that, for the sake of common good, we will do what it takes to ensure stability in the modern world. I have a dream that we shall lead by example and ensure that the American territory may remain in peace. Thank you for the thought, Lord Mortimer, but I don't see where you're leading. I'm coming to it, Mr. President. I need not remind you that North America is currently divided between the United States on the East Coast and Spain, which occupies the remaining two-thirds of the continent. Well, I propose that Spain cede the center of the continent to France, namely all of Louisiana. Louisiana? But, well, it is not for sale. Lord Mortimer, I sincerely hope I have not come all this way just to hear you ramble on about what Spain should and should not do. When we went to all the trouble of gaining the territory a few years ago, it was not just to lose it today. Have I made myself clear? What did I tell you, William? You speak of union, and yet here you are about to tear us apart. Duke Manuel, I perfectly understand you. But rest assured, you will soon adore my proposition. You shall see. Well, since you give me the choice, my good fellow, allow me to doubt it. However, I am impatient to hear what Spain could possibly gain from the sale of Louisiana. I never spoke of a sale, my good fellow. What? But I, I do not understand. There is one more territory left to conquer, if I'm not mistaken, in the Northwest. It is, of course, occupied by your notorious Indians, but... We shall soon be rid of the savages, so that is not the question. Duke, these savages, as you call them, were there before you. They are on their homeland. As much as the black people of Africa, Monsieur de Richet. That does not stop your dear France from massacring them and sending them like cattle to Mr. Washington's cotton plantations to provide him with cheap labor. So you keep your morals to yourself, if you please. Senor, I would not like to be associated with that. The subject of black slaves in the United States of America is a complex subject, which we shall resolve at a future date. It obviously doesn't stop you from sleeping at night. Not in the least. Do not imagine I have anything against the American Indians or the blacks. That is not the question. But business is business. It is the natural order of things, Monsieur de Richet. There have always been men who govern other men. That is simply the way it is. And it might as well be the likes of you who rule. Is that right? But of course. Come now, my friends. Let us not digress. Anyway, these primitive people have no souls, Louis. We bring the good word to them in order to save them. You'll see. Colonization brings with it many benefits, too. Uh, excuse me, if you don't mind, Your Eminence, uh, I shall continue. Duke Manuel, I believe that Spain should cede Louisiana to France free of charge. This is utterly grotesque, Lord Mortimer. What a strange example you set for your young protege. Isn't that so, Monsieur de Richet? Do you understand anything of this proposition? We are neighbors, Duke Manuel. Remember, your main rival in Europe is more likely to be England, who is plowing the seas right up your coastline. Hand over Louisiana to France and make her a prime ally. Come, Louis. Spain and Great Britain are already allies and have nothing to gain by breaking their alliance. Even if I do agree, Duchess, 
The omnipresence of the English fleet in Atlantic waters does not particularly please me. I must say, William, I find your project mostly disfavors me. I thought you were my friend. And I am, Mr. President. That is why I'm doing everything in my power to calm your expansionist fervor. France, in Louisiana, should persuade you not to attempt anything to take the territory by force. Louisiana is a vast wetland where you would needlessly lose most of your troops. It would weaken you and offer certain nations the perfect opportunity to take back your famous United States. I am protecting you from yourself, George. Trust me. I understand. But with friends like you, sir, I certainly don't need any more enemies. I hope you know what you're doing. Am I imagining things, or does it look like Washington isn't aware of Mortimer's plan? Not to put too fine a point on it, Lord Mortimer, uh, but I doubt the Holy See would be in favor of Catholic Louisiana being handed over to secular revolutionaries and king killers. I should think Monsieur de Richet has an opinion on this subject, does he not? Your Eminence, have no fear over that. I am sure France will do everything in its power to protect the Christians of Louisiana. My young friend, how can you come out with such a remark after the discussion we had on the evening of your arrival? If France was so respectful of worship, it would not be bleeding priests as it is doing at this very moment in time. Don't be naive. This is politics. The Holy See must be concerned at seeing such a large territory falling into the hands of the French. Mi auguro che insegnerete l'educazione a questo giovanotto presuntuoso, Sir Gregory. In any case, my lord, I doubt the English crown will agree. Ich weiß sicher Ihnen, Emily, nie Preußen wird diese Vereinbarung akzeptieren. Duchess, I am persuaded that we shall find a common ground. That's enough, William. These are great tight. We don't care about the fate of Louisiana. That worthless expanse of putrid swamps interests no one but yourself. Speak for yourself, my friend. Hold on there, Mr. Royal Gigolo. Lower the volume and let Sir Gregory finish. Home, Godoy, and now Volner? Mortimer's adversaries are ready to tear each other to pieces, and he takes a malicious pleasure in watching it happen. How dare Gentlemen, you! Gentlemen, let us try to remain calm. There you are, William. See where your projects have taken us, as per usual. Chaos! That's enough. I'm tired. We shall continue this discussion tomorrow, but please be aware that your project will never be ratified. Those who are opposed to this project, follow me. Are you coming with us, Monsieur de Richer? Come, Gregory. I think Louis would rather stay. Wouldn't you, Louis? As for me, I think I shall remain with Lord Mortimer, Sir Gregory. You are committing a grave error, Louis. Time will tell. My friends, I would like to thank you for staying. Good God, William. What is this I hear about you reinforcing military power in Louisiana? I have no interest in having France for a neighbor, and you know that very well. Calm down, George. Louis, explain our plan to Mr. Washington, please. You see, Mr. President, Lord Mortimer anticipates that once France obtains Louisiana, they will cede it to you. What do you mean? To us? The United States? You heard right. But I... President Washington, 
the United States will double in size. By what miracle have you... You need to expand, George. You and France are the two major democracies in the modern world. It is necessary that you both become superpowers. Are you really going to sponsor democracy throughout the world? Of course, Monsieur Peru. That's why I don't want Spain to get too attached to those weapons. Uh, please continue, Louis. Explain my vision to Mr. President. Mr. President, Lord Mortimer intends for you to conquer all the North American continent. He's relying on you to not stop at Louisiana, but to continue to push west. Indeed, it would be dishonest to pretend that this is not my final objective. But why didn't you tell me before? So that Lord Mortimer would appear to be isolated without support. Exactly. You got it, Louis. Lord Mortimer retains the advantage by advancing under cover. And, for it to work, he needed you to act surprised. William, you haven't changed. Always one step ahead. One step ahead? You're joking. More like five. On that note, my friends, it's getting late. Mr. President, continue to take offense over my project when we resume the conference in the morning. You do it to a T. And if Sir Gregory has the audacity to send you an emissary to convince you to go against me, do me a favor. String him along if you can. The more they believe we are divided, the more we'll have our hands free. Only too happy to oblige. Now, let us get some rest. We've got a big day tomorrow. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Louis, if you have a minute, I would like to ask a favor of you. I'm going to require your services. How can I be of help? Tell me all about it. Our adversaries are many, and the closing vote of the conference will soon be upon us. Time is of an essence, so I'll need you to assist me this evening. How can I help? I need you to go this very evening to persuade Signor Godoy to join us. He is the backbone of Gregory's resistance. Turn him round and all the others will follow in such a stampede that Gregory will be able to do nothing but admit defeat. Lord Mortimer, with all due respect, don't you think I'm the last person Godoy wants to talk to? I'm sure you can do it. I believe in you. Lord Mortimer, you're not telling me everything. Let's say I wouldn't disapprove if the right honorable, though nonetheless choleric, Duke Manuel put you in his bad books. If it could motivate him to declare war on France, it would greatly serve our interests. War? What do you mean? I told you before the conference. The more we distract Spain from the Americas, the less it will have an eye on Louisiana. But all the same, we're talking about a war in Europe. Don't worry. That's why Mr. Bonaparte is with us. I am convinced we'll be perfectly capable of managing the conflict. And Signor Godoy is not a great soldier. He will not commit Spain to a long war that he won't be capable of managing. I'll go straight away. Thank you, my boy. And get some rest afterwards. Big day tomorrow. Dante's Purgatory. Why does your mind presume to flight when you're still like the imperfect grub, the worm before it's attained its final form? Charming.
chest with the occult symbol representing air. Monsieur Johann von Wulner. Great Work of the Soul by S. Madone. Pure alchemy is a thought, an art that is performed on the matter of the soul. Great alchemists work to transform and perfect the latter by a series of processes known as the Great Work. There are four phases to attain the ultimate and spiritual fulfillment. The human soul must descend, be corrupt, in order to become decomposed. It's something like what I felt when I think of what I found out about my mother. The soul must be transformed in order to attain sublimation by the recombination of the alchemist. It's tempting. The soul broken up must be purified by the alchemist. Nice program. Thus ends the great work. The incarnation of the purified spirit, the elevation of the soul, now become perfect its resurrection, thanks to the action of the alchemist. Except if the alchemist has bad intentions, then it's called manipulation. Very metaphorical, as occult theories go. The human spirit being the prima materia of the alchemist. Hey, a Russian ruble. I wonder what it'd be worth today. Great, honey. Golden elixir. A chest locked with a four letter code. Surely a word close to the owner's heart. Byzant from the Byzantine Empire, a coin often used during the St. Louis era. The alchemist is an old man. Amber crystals.
but just with a half circle pattern. An untutored hand copied these notes. Looks like a healing method. Well, that's a pity. The writing is barely legible. Feet and hands are bound. A piece of cloth in the mouth prevents the tongue from being sectioned. It looks like preparation for an exorcism. Is Elizabeth really possessed? The note suggests binding the feet and hands, then blocking the jaws using a piece of cloth to prevent the tongue from being sectioned. That looks like a method to control an epileptic fit. I wonder if Elizabeth is the one being treated for that illness. Honey, the remedy of the gods.
broken it. Oh well, never mind. Let's see what Washington has to hide, shall we? The president's personal reserve of laudanum, and judging by the quantity, he can't go without it. Ah, there's also a letter. My dear George, I'd like to invite you to join me as planned at my place. I have a project to share you. It is time that the United States played a more important role on the world stage. I understand your reluctance of playing with fire. I know your new country is very young, but rest assured that I would do nothing to jeopardize what we have built together. I look forward to seeing you soon. Your friend, William. Portrait of George Washington. Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. Monseigneur, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Lovely lectures, Mortimer's golden elixir. Dear Monsieur de Richet. Ah, Monsieur de Richet. Uh, you wouldn't have seen Duke Manuel by any chance, would you? I was going to ask you the same question. I wanted to speak to him, but no one will open the door. I'm not sure he's in there. If I want to pass through, I'll have to get Volner out of the way. I've searched all over the manor, but I can't find him. One thing's for sure, Monsieur de Richet. He's neither in his room nor on this floor. I've just looked all over. I propose we both look for him. 
The first to find him tells the Duke that the other is also looking for him. Agreed? Perfect. Let's do that. I shall have a look in the library. If you find the Duke before me, tell him I want to speak to him. Yes. Let's proceed as you say. Thank you, Monsieur de Richet. Right. Now be a good boy and go look somewhere else. Manuel Godoy, a painting of himself in his honey. I couldn't have hoped for better. Don Quixote, talking without Prometheus, punished for stealing fire from the gods and giving it to man. Charles IV of Spain. Now there's no chance of Godoy forgetting who he is. A drachma. Mary Louise of Parma. <laughs> How ironic having a painting of the Queen of Spain in one's room, my Lord Duke. Hey, it looks like someone slipped something in the back here. It's a letter. Let's see what it says. It reeks of perfume, and it's written in Spanish. Godoy, you really are a little devil. Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Lovely lectures Mortimer's giving to his guests. Very jolly.
Thunder like water will give me a little reprieve. Duke Manuel? Well, well. Monsieur de Richet, I was not expecting you. I am not in the mood, sir, I warn you. What do you want from me, sir? I see you're still feeling under pressure. Since your arrival, I've noticed that you've been on the defensive. Huh. It seems to me that Monsieur Perru has a knack for getting your back up. That is the least you can say. Indeed. I was warned. I knew what to expect. For God's sake, why in the hell did your people execute their king? Have the French gone stark, raving mad? There are nothing but monarchies in power in Europe. They will all come crashing down on you. We shall see. It might well turn out to be the opposite. <laughs> you certainly do not lack for audacity, young man. Just tell me one thing, monsieur. Why did you side with Mortimer? He is alone. Isolated. The United States can do nothing to help you, and France is surrounded by over ten countries just waiting for the word to pounce. Really. I do not see why you choose Mortimer. But, monsieur, just think about it. It will enable the United States to become a giant democratic state. What a message for the rest of the world. We will shove your damn democracy down your throat, Richet. I will raise the whole of Europe against you. Tell me, do you really believe Spain has any interest in ceding Louisiana to France? Duke Manuel, for Spain, I don't know. But for you, I'm convinced that Lord Mortimer will thank you generously. Ah, uh, you would not be trying to bribe me, would you? Nothing could be further from my mind. It would be an insult to believe that someone such as yourself might have a practical attitude towards its virtue. Even so, it is only natural that you be supported and encouraged if you were to follow Lord Mortimer, isn't it? Indeed, for services rendered, it would be natural for me to receive compensation for the time spent achieving such an undertaking, yes? Naturally. And, given your status, my Lord Duke, the compensation would have to be considerable. Naturally. Tell me one last thing. What would I gain from all this? I'm sure that Lord Mortimer will be very appreciative. He's always supported those who have given him help, and you know well that he has every means to do so. That at least is true. Come on, you fool, give it up. You're trapped like a rat. Monsieur, I am... ...founded. I did not think you capable, but you have succeeded. I will be more wary of you the next time. Nonetheless, if you can guarantee Lord Mortimer's support, then yes, you can count on my vote when the time comes. However, I expect you to be discreet with regard to my former partners, without which our agreement will become null and void. Of course, my Lord Duke. You can count on me. Lord Mortimer will be delighted to hear the news. I hope you know what you are getting into, Louis. I bid you good luck. Good night, my Lord Duke. See you tomorrow. Well. That's one thing out of the way. The only thing left to do is wait for the conference to resume tomorrow morning.
Gru's name tag's fallen off, and his door is ajar. Huh, that's me. Good evening, Monsieur le Francais. Duchess, you're here. What a charming surprise. I'm beginning to think you can't be without me. You have managed to penetrate my armor, sir. Am I disturbing you, perhaps? That's not what I said. Ah, by the way, you surprised me during the conference. Why is that? Well, you are going to lose. Why stay with Lord Mortimer? I believe he has every chance of winning. My, you are a rash one. However, if ever you want to change sides, please feel free to let me know. But tell me, you didn't come here to try and make me change my mind, did you? That's the last thing on my mind. Although you would have everything to gain by it. Do you perhaps know something that I don't? Come on, Emily. It's time you lay your cards on the table. If you know something I don't about Lord Mortimer, now's the time. I don't want to speak ill of him, but in certain circles, you can't exactly say he has a good reputation. Continue. Well, there have been instances where he has used people, then gotten rid of them once he no longer seemed to need them, Louis. He makes fine promises, makes you feel valuable, tests you. But beware. I'm worried that something might happen to you. Are you advising me to change sides as a precaution? I'd rather say, as a safety measure. Louis, if you trust me, you ought to ask yourself why I have chosen home. You do trust me, don't you? Of course, Emily. You know you have my full trust. Louis, you're lying. That's not good. Any more of that and I might get upset. Admit, though, that it does make you think. There's still time, you know. Join us before it's too late. Unfortunately, my word is my bond. I don't want to leave Lord Mortimer in the lurch. Very well, as you wish. It's up to you to decide. Tell me, are these visits to Mortimer's always so intense? Yes and no. My sister doesn't normally disappear like she has. Any news of your mother? Well, I should imagine you're still shaken. 
I promise to shed light on my mother's circumstances as soon as possible. There's not much to shed light on. What your mother did is inexcusable. She won the trust of my sister in order to more easily betray her. She didn't do anything to her. I... Can we change subject, please? I didn't come here to go through all that again. Of course, it's late. You're right. Come, Louis. My friends, do not worry. I assure you that Lord Mortimer's plan will never see the light of day. I shall deal with informing our allies, but for the time being, I need you to make a stand. What do you think about Monsieur de Richet? I don't know yet. I feel there's great potential in him. He looks like he can be trusted. And uh, Duchess Hillsborough. Why isn't she here? She's busy. Don't worry about her. Oh, isn't it time to replace her? Not so fast, sir. She is an important figure. You ought to have a little more faith in her. What are we going to do about Washington? He will be a hard nut to crack. On our chessboard, he is Mortimer's king. Don't worry. Mr. President only wants one thing. To keep his dear America united. He won't jeopardize everything he has achieved on a whim. He has been serving Mortimer for quite some time. It won't be easy to uh, bring him around. Do you feel all right, Mr. Godot? You haven't said a word. Please excuse me, gentlemen. I feel tired. Oh, I see. I think it is high time you left us then. Now! Emily? Emily? Are you there? Sir, the conference is about to begin. You are expected in the conference room. Tell them I'm coming. Thank you. Come on, Louis. The game is back on. My friends, the conference is about to begin. And please excuse me if I troubled you last night with my project. I understand that you might well have a few questions to ask. As you know, the final vote will be cast in a few days. This morning's aim is to answer your questions and check the temperature of your respective positions so that we may reach a greater understanding. As always, Lord Mortimer. Uh, we parted in perfect disagreement, my lord. Where would you like us to take it from? Come, sir. Please let William believe he still has a chance of winning us over. Otherwise, his imprecations will lack panache, and we shall be bored stiff. Oh, let me reassure you. I am convinced that a good night's sleep has brought sound advice, and that this morning will be even more interesting. Therefore, I would like to go around the table in order to hear everyone's first impressions. Well, I am still firmly against it. Even though my choice won't count. Against. 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 And you, Luke Manuel? Well, you see, uh, 
It is more complicated than it. it uh... Good eye. Calm, Gregory. Don't try to impress my guests, please. They are not your guests. Gregory, anyone under my roof is, by definition, my guest. You included. I would be very grateful if you would let my guests speak. Duke Manuel, you were saying you still had some doubts? Well, you see, the situation has changed since last night. What's going on here, my Lord Duke? You see, I gave it some thought during the night. New arguments have come to light. What do you mean, Duke Manuel? Sir Gregory, I regret to inform you that Spain will not support you in this operation. I vote for. Moreover, in response to arguments brought to my attention, I declare war on France. What? What is he doing? If you think France is afraid of you, you are dreaming. Over ten nations rise against you, young man, and you behave like a yapping little dog? When the French armies are at your door, my Lord Duke, you will change your tune. Well, as for me, I am for Lord Mortimer's project, despite Duchesse Hillsborough's overwhelmingly convincing nocturnal attentions. What? So Emily was playing at trying to win over guests last night? It was nothing more than a friendly little chat, of course. How could it be otherwise? And by the way, remember me to your husband when you see him. And you, President Washington, what is your position? Four, of course. Well, that leaves just yourself and Monsieur Peru, Louis. You're all making me sick. Look at yourselves. What? You are pathetic! Have you been drinking or what? There you are, quibbling away. My lord, do this. And Madame Duchesse, that! You know very well that we're nothing but puppets on a damn string! Jacques, come in! Let's end the charade! It's over! Jacques. My lord, thank you for everything you've done for me over the years. But it didn't come for free. And now I see the price is too high to pay. I'll stop. Come, Jacques, we'll talk it over. No, I'm finished! I want my freedom back, my lord. I shall no longer work for you. Wait! Derisé! You just can't help it, can you? Stop trying to play the hero, man! Monsieur, I know I don't really know you, but you seem like a decent person. I have done so many horrible things! You blame yourself, I can see that. Everything's not lost. I don't want to do bad things anymore. You can take control of yourself again. You can fix whatever it is you've done. Do you really believe that? Of course, Jacques. You'll have all the time you need. we can work things out. But you don't know him. Let's stay united, Jack. He's nothing without us. Really? Trust me. Calm down now, Jack. It's over. You have no idea what you just put me through. It would be nice if we could all settle down a bit. And let us thank Louis for his intervention. It was very courageous of him. Monsieur Peru, you could have seriously hurt someone if Monsieur de Richet here hadn't stopped you. Your behavior is unacceptable. You would do better to go and rest in your apartment. My friends, we shall continue the conference later. I would like to apologize for the inexcusable behavior of my guest. We all need to recover from all of this excitement. Take the rest of the day off.
has done. I spoke to him only recently. Monsieur Peru has lost his mind. It's obvious. Yet another way for the French to make a spectacle of themselves. Well, once again it has worked. My friends, let us settle down, please. We are all in shock, of course. Let us celebrate Louis' courage. He enabled us to avert a tragedy. Yes, that was very noble of you, Louis. You have given us all a fine lesson in courage. I... thank you. He owes you his life. That's quite something. That madman deserves to die. We are providing Monsieur Peru with care, but rest assured, he is no longer a danger to himself or anyone else. I think everyone needs a little rest. Can you stay a moment? Of course. Louis, I wanted to thank you personally. I admire what you did to save Monsieur Peru's life. You have given us all a wonderful lesson in courage. Don't mention it, my lord. You would have done the same. I was just quicker. Ah, humility is a fine quality, sir. Where is he now? In his room. I've sedated him. I don't want him trying to take his life again. Or worse yet, attacking one of the guests. When in despair, Monsieur Peru is clearly a dangerous man. Tell me, my lord, what did you expect of him exactly? I found it difficult to understand what his role was here. In fact, I asked him here to speak about our collaboration. His mission was soon to come to an end, and I was hoping to persuade him to slow down. I had a few interesting missions abroad to propose to him. Did you tell him that? I just let him know that perhaps it was time to move on to something else. On that note, my lord, I'll be leaving you. Have we covered everything? Absolutely. Oh, Louis, one more thing, please. I wanted to thank you for your support during the conference. You've made the right choice, and it gives me tremendous satisfaction to have you with me on this project. What is at stake is worth it, my lord. Now, I won't hide from you the fact that I have no idea by what miracle we could ever get a unanimous vote. Trust me, Louis. We still have a few more cards to play. You'll see. Anything can happen in politics. I'll see you later, my lord.
Next time, I'll listen to my mother. Not a day has gone by without something happening to me. What now? Louis, open up, please. I'm coming, Mr. President, I'm coming. Louis, ah, oh, there you are at last. Yes, I... I just saw your mother. She was accompanied by Emily, and they both went into the Duchess's room. I tried to join them, but I was refused entry. Louis, this does not bode well. Oh, shit. Emily might want to avenge your sister. I must act quickly. You're right, Mr. President. Thank you. Duke Manuel Godoy. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. I do believe that's Emily's voice. I can't understand what she's saying. to get inside Emily's room through the shit it's locked It's as if there are several people inside. Once again, you're the one who's the victim in all this. What are you on about now? I should never have told you what happened to me. That's how the devil's thorn you know well. to be used to I'm uncover the best. I know you William Pitt, the elder. Stop. Two coils we'll circle the lock. If you keep on. A letter from William Pitt the younger addressed to Emily. He's the present prime minister of the United Kingdom. What on earth is? You... Mother? How dare you do this to me? You can talk after everything I've done for you. You are joking, I hope, right? I gave you my life. That's enough, Emma. Now that Louis is here, you will leave Sarah alone. Cease your revenge immediately. What? What? If you think you're going to... Louis, help me, I beg you. I can no longer reason with her. I am Emily. Quit playing games. I... what? Honestly, don't be ridiculous. No. I am Emily. You are wasting your time. Louis knows very well how to tell us apart. After everything we've been through together. Yes, well... Don't you dare bring him into this. This is between you and me. I ask for nothing more, so stop taking it out on Sarah. I... you frizzy little bitch! How dare you! Now that I've told you everything, you want to take my place, do you? You are joking, I hope. I'm the one who told you everything that's been going on while you were away. Go on, then. That's what you want, isn't it? You want to kill me? Go on, then. Shoot! After all the trouble I've gone through to find you. Go on. What are you waiting for? Here, Louis, take this. Wait, what's going- An entire life for this. Go on, shoot. Sorry, Louis, I, I can't shoot her. She's oh, my that's sister. Enough, Emma. 
Louis, out of the way. She's dangerous. Don't trust her. What are you trying to do? Louis, out of the way. I am not Emma. Come on, Louis, tell her who the real Emily is. Wait, I... That's right, Louis. I'm fed up with this little game. Tell him who the real Emily is. Why do these things always happen to me? Well, Louis, come on, you know how to tell us apart, right? Yes, yes, but... I'd like to ask you a few questions to make sure there's no doubt. Rational and open, Louis. Let's see. How can I tell them apart? Wait, I've got an idea. On the night of our arrival... You asked me what had become of me since we last met in London, many years ago. What did I answer? You told me you had become a detective, Louis. You only know that because I told you. You even told me about your exploits with the thieves who tortured their victims. What were they called again? The Chauffeur d'Auger, I think. I was the one who told you that. Liar. I was there. Right. Let's find something else. Ah, yes. Let's speak about my arrival at the manor. On the night of our arrival, we were warming ourselves in front of the fire. Mormor welcomed us in a very odd way. What happened? It won't work, Louis. It wasn't Mortimer who welcomed us. It was Sir Gregory. Sorry, Louis. I already told her. Very well. Let's try something else. On the first night, we went up to bed. But I wasn't tired. I went for a little stroll. Do you remember if we saw each other that night or not? Of course, Louis. You broke into my room. That doesn't prove a thing. I was the one who told you that. Don't think you're going to get away with this deception so easily. I can assure you, you're going to regret pretending to be me once Louis has exposed you. Right. I don't think I'll get very far like this. I'll have to find something better. Oh, I don't think I'll even wait until he's finished. Take it easy now. Are you mad, Louis? Lower your arm. Oh, I better act quickly if I don't want things to get out of hand. Come on, she's putting one over on you. Look at yourself for crying out loud. You were prepared to shoot me down. In the secret room behind the study. Talk to them about what you've been doing. Maybe they haven't spoken about it between each other yet. On the night of the disappearance of Elizabeth Adams. What about it? What do you want to know about that night? How did you vanquish the Medusa? The Gorgon always attacks the best protected. The sword kills the monster, the monster charges the shield, the shield reflects the light, and the lantern perturbs the monster. I didn't need more than two minutes to solve that enigma. That's right. Make fun of us. That's enough! I've had enough of this charade. Louis, there's only one way to tell us apart. There's just one thing I didn't tell her about in detail. Too bad for you, Emma. I didn't want it to come to this, but you leave me no choice. Ask her about you and I. You just lost Emma. I indeed didn't tell you everything about it. Come, Louis. Speak about our intimacy. Very well. Let's talk about us. Last night, you came to visit me, and I can't help wondering why. Why did you come to my room? Louis, you must be mistaken. I did not go to your room last night. And that's where your little game ends, Emma. Because I never told you about it. So, there you can't answer. What? No! You didn't do that. I didn't want you to be jealous of Louis. 
Remember how you always used to react whenever you felt you were competing against a man? You dirty... That's enough. I've had enough of this charade. That's enough, both of you. Now I know who the real Emily is. You are Emily Hillsborough. I knew you wouldn't get it wrong, Louis. No! You little bitch! Watch out, Louis! No! Hell, what have I done? See what you've done. See. Louis? What on earth is going- Mother! Go! You must leave. Everyone's going to arrive. Louis, what's going on? Duchess? Is everything all right? Go! Go, Mother! No one must find you here. Go! Come, Louis! There's nothing more you can do! But I- Leave us! Emily, what's going on? Mother, go to the crypt. I'll meet you there. I'll be waiting for you. Emily. Madam, I'm coming in! It was bound to end like this, Louis. Let me stay with her, please. Go, I'll cover you. What? What are you doing there? Stop! God damn it! Now what's going on? Corn decorated with a cockade. It must belong to a French soldier. Good God! They're all here. They must have heard the gunshot. Where is Lord Mortimer? Can anyone hear anything through the door? Did you hear that? I was not dreaming, was Certainly I? Certainly not, Duke Godoy. What's going on? Someone had the bang coming from the Duchess's room. And she isn't answering. Gentlemen, go back to your rooms. Go back to your rooms. I shall find out from Lord Mortimer what this is all about. Thank you. My instructions are clear, sir. No one is to enter. Lives of the Noble Greeks and Romans by Plutarch. A biography of the great men. Opened Brutus's page. Caesar, stabbed by multiple blows at once, sees Brutus raise the dagger on him. Then, covering his head with his robe, he delivers himself to the arms of the conspirators. Nice family. Let's keep it. Might come in handy someday.
Louis! At last, there you are. Mother, wait, I... Come, we have to be quick. No, wait, Mother, Time I... Time is running out, Louis. First, we must... No! That's enough. I won't go a step further unless you explain to me what is going on here. I'm begging you. Talk to me. You must trust me, my son. You are not ready yet. You are the one who should trust me. Tell me what's happening. You would never believe me. I came all the way here for you. Now I've found you. I'm ready, Mother. If only... Louis, I have always taught you to keep your mind open and logical. I know you are going to find it hard to believe, but what I am going to reveal to you is entirely true. Many years ago, I found out that demons really do live among us. I beg your pardon? And that they can influence our thoughts. Mother, listen to yourself. I know you're exhausted, but for crying out loud, listen to what you're saying. Demons? <laughs> what next? An ancient monster with a head like an octopus? What do your demons look like? Have they got horns and a pointed tail? No, these are not creatures with billy goat's legs. Forget your Christian folklore. Imagine them more as parasitic spirits. They possess their hosts and direct them from inside. Parasitic spirits? Yes, they are capable of going from one body to another as they see fit. And two of them are present on this island. Right, so let me guess. I'd put my money on the Boogeyman and Father Christmas. Joking here? Many years ago, well before you were born, I crossed paths with one of them. Since then, I've spent my life trying to find it again. When we recovered the Alizif, I was persuaded that Von Burchard was working for this demon in one way or another. But I thought he would hand the book to a middleman during this conference. That's where I made an error, an error that could well turn out to be fatal. The one who Bertrand was meant to give the book to was none other than the demon in person, Mortimer. Not to mention that Holm had sent Volner to get it for him. Holm and Mortimer are demons? They both seem to disagree about many things, but I'll admit I never knew exactly why. There are many of them, Louis, not just those two. Mother, have you any proof to support any of this? Of course, but you do too. You had everything laid out in front of you. Didn't you notice anything? I must admit, I found it difficult to understand how and why Mortimer didn't have a place in history. On the continent, Mortimer and Holm are mere dandies who organize society balls. History forgets them with a disconcerting facility. No one speaks about them, and yet they whisper in the ears of kings and presidents. You mean the conference? How can you explain that someone manages to bring together so many important figures without anyone knowing? And without any security or personnel. I went beyond the Nightmare Mother. You understood the Masonic date. 1191. Of course, it was during that siege that the demon took possession of Sir Mortimer. They spent a whole night in conversation until the early hours of the morning. Mortimer had passed the test. He had charmed the demon, and so it chose him to be its host for centuries to come. But tell me, did you find his secret study? I did indeed. Did you see his maps of the world? He has contacts the world over. Yes, I've been developing the Golden Order across the world for many years, and I've never seen anyone with such influence. It's simply inhuman. I went beyond the Nightmare Mother. You understood the Masonic date. 
1191. Of course! It was during that siege that the demon took possession of Sir Mortimer. They spent a whole night in conversation until the early hours of the morning. Mortimer had passed the test. He had charmed the demon, and so it chose him to be its host for centuries to come. But tell me, did you find his secret study? I did indeed. Did you see his maps of the world? He has contacts the world over. Yes, I've been developing the Golden Order across the world for many years, and I've never seen anyone with such influence. It's simply inhuman. Well, those property deeds across the world, all signed by the same hand and over several centuries. I am proud of you, Louis. I found your notes written in lemon juice. Where all eyes size you up. At one stage, I was so afraid of losing my mind that I noted everything down. Congratulations, Louis. Wait, please tell me you didn't open Pandora's box. The urn? No, I didn't. Why? Good. We'll deal with it later. Louis, I am proud of you. You came all this way. You found me. You have surpassed me. You taught me everything I know. Right. How did it all begin? I saw him! What, what do you mean, you saw him? I was 20 years old. I was young and carefree. I traveled the world in search of adventure. In the Persian Gulf, we came across an ancient grimoire that became unlocked. Composed of seven parts, each one was a book in itself, set in a sort of metal armor that structured the whole thing. When all the volumes were brought together, they formed a single book. On my return to Paris, I set to studying these pages. I spent all my days and nights studying them. Oh, I can imagine you doing that. But the writing was in a language I had never seen before. Developed well before Sumerian, in my opinion. So I got the idea to form a small occult circle composed of all the major names in the occult world to see if anyone else could crack it. And you found no one. And I found someone, Louis. I found him. Or rather, he found me. He was young, charismatic, he was flamboyant. You mean Mortimer? He was a veritable mine of knowledge. I showed him the book, and he was able to decipher a few passages. We spent several months together studying the pages. He was already old in those days, wasn't he? So you recognized him when you arrived on the island, right? No, he wasn't in that body. But I know it was him. I swear it was him. The way he spoke, his posture, a few of his intonations, his mannerisms. Wait a minute. You were talking about 60 years ago. I I've lost the thread. Yes, sorry. He helped me understand certain passages until I realized that he only translated a few parts for me. But I had aroused his interest. It was too late. How so? I mean to say he manipulated me. He used me, and in the end, he stole the book with all its secrets. Did he ever go to your place? Not once. At least I don't think so. But before disappearing, he proposed a pact between us. He proposed that I follow him and let him teach me, allow him to bring me up. And you accepted. Please don't be stupid. You don't make deals with the devil. After that, I spent my whole life looking for him. Three years later, in Berlin, I just missed him. In London, I lost six members of the Order in a chase. In 1741, in Tunisia, I found a sect of fanatics who had crossed paths with him once. 1741, in Poland. 1749, in India. Eight years ago, in Venice. We agreed never to speak about what happened in Venice, Louis. You agreed? And that was before you spoke to me about demons. Wait, the baby we delivered, you and me, that night in Venice? Did he have anything to do with Lord Mortimer? The child was his son. We stole his son? Are you insane? I always thought we took him to save him. That was the case. 
It was precisely to save him from his father. Need I remind you the mother died during childbirth? What became of the child? Later. For the moment, that is not the key issue here. Once we found the Alizif in Paris, I followed Von Borchert's trail here. I didn't think it would lead me straight to the demon. It was careless of me. He toyed with me for a few days, until I caught on, until I saw him as he was. But he had no intention of letting me leave. We are all his pawns, Louis, and if we don't want to spend the rest of our lives turning round in circles here, we must absolutely get off this island. All right, can we move on? Wait a minute, one last thing. What was going on with the cannons in Tuscany? It was nothing. Since when does the order finance wars? The cannons for that Bonaparte fellow? Listen, once in the lion's den, I did whatever I could to appear legitimate. So yes, I pretended to be interested in Mortimer's project about a young military man who was seeking funding for a foundry in Tuscany. Between you and me, if buying China would have enabled me to escape, I would have signed without hesitation. I want to know what happened between you and Emily's sister. Great responsibility often brings difficult choices, Louis. That's all you need to know. Mother, I won't take a step further if you don't answer me. You dare blackmail me? I'm listening. All right, I used her. So there you are. Happy now? We had the Al-Azif, and I didn't think we would be able to escape with it. In order to ensure that the book did not fall into their hands, or that one of them couldn't read in us where we had hidden it, I asked Emily it's to... Emma. Yes, or rather for me, it was Emily. So I asked Emma to hide it without anyone seeing, and then I disposed of her. I am sorry for her, but she was part of the Golden Order, Louis. She knew the rules when she joined. I want to know what happened with Elizabeth Adams. Louis, we haven't time for those details. I'm sorry, Mother, but I want to know. She was one of the receptacles for these monsters. I met her parents when she was born. One of the demons got inside her. The demon used her to spy on her father, John Adams. He is one of the Founding Fathers and Vice President of the United States, you know. Mortimer possessed her? No, I don't think it was Mortimer. Her father, John Adams, hired me to tend to her, but the evil in her was too deep. In spite of the various treatments I tried on her, I never succeeded in getting it out of her. It's not something I'm proud of, Louis, but I had to try everything. Mother, did you kill her? Of course not! Don't be stupid! I had no interest in getting rid of her. What did you negotiate about the Alazif with Volner? Absolutely nothing. I managed to pull the wool over his eyes until I found a way to flee. Are you going to tell me what happened to your hand? Better than that. I shall show you. Samuel Ritter du Chois, you wanted to send me a letter about Godoy. I wanted you to run a check on Duke Manuel, but frankly it doesn't really matter anymore now. Godoy is just a pawn like the others. He is not the one I was looking for. On the evening of my arrival, Cardinal Piaggi came looking for you. He was determined to give you a letter. More of his lists. Louis, I think I know what's in that letter, and I beseech you to believe that it is the least of our worries. We can sort that out later. Good. I think that's about right. We shall speak about it once we get back to France. Great actions for humanity have been decided by demons for centuries, Louis. They are playing with our destiny. We are their slaves. And it's time for it to stop. By the way, what was Mortimer's project at this conference? He wants the United States to occupy all the North American territory. France should recover Louisiana and give it to the United States. In that case, 
the Americans would just have to push west to chase the Spanish from the continent once and for all. And as Mortimer controls Washington, you may just as well say that it will put him at the head of a world superpower. We should do our utmost to put a stop to Mortimer's plans. But for the time being, there are more pressing matters. Are you going to tell me why we're here? There. That's why we are here. Reassure me, we aren't going to have to force that one, are we? I don't think we're even capable of doing it. You're going to have to find a way to open it. Why, of course. And what's inside? Something to vanquish them with? Perfect. So, how does it open? We'll need several keys. I found a note from the architect who conceived the mechanism in Mortimer's secret study. We have to first gather six objects before we try anything. Are your six objects the keys? Exactly. We have the Clement III cross, the nails, the Gutenberg Bible, the exegesis of Judas, an armillary sphere, and all we need to match up the dates between the different calendars. Why a cross? Well, I haven't the foggiest idea, but it just so happens that's what you are going to use to activate the mechanism. I found the one Mortimer kept. It belonged to Cardinal Guibert, better known by the name of Pope Clement III. Perfect. Where is it? Unfortunately, I've lost it. When I lost my hand, I went dashing out, and it must have fallen from my pocket. Remember, Mother, I I'm certain you can remember. Let me think. You were running? I was bleeding to death. You remember the pain? I thought I was going to faint. Yes, I remember. I don't think it can be far, can it? Would you have lost it outside? No, I don't think so. It must be in the area. I don't remember going up with it. Perfect. I'll search the crypt before leaving. The exegesis. Anything else? Hmm. You... Did you manage to vanquish the Medusa? To open the chimney? Yes, absolutely. So you've already come across it. It's the Bible of Judas that is exposed in the secret room behind the chimney. Why do they call it an exegesis? Because that's what it is, and not an apocryphal Bible, strictly speaking. It's the study of a text with a summary, not an actual Bible. Anyway, well done for the Gorgon. You did well. You didn't get tricked by the light bouncing back. Thanks. Do you think I can take it safely? We haven't got a choice, Louis. Without it, we won't be able to work out this cursed mechanism. Some nails? Don't ask me. I'm not the one who made the mechanism, you know. When I arrived, there were already a few of them inserted, so I didn't have to worry about those. On the other hand, I remember seeing some in Mortimer's secret study, behind his nightmare. In a golden cup? Yes. Yes, I saw them too. Perfect. It will be easy for you to find them then. You need three of them. Very well. You remember what to do about the rollers. 1191 to enter. And 6466 to to exit. Of course. There's one in the portrait gallery. Yes, but it's enormous. If you don't want to have to go back and forth several times, then I suggest you get a smaller one. What did you do then? I didn't think I'd need one. I started without one, and I lost my hand before I did need one. And you can see the result. There's one in the portrait gallery. That's right. You still believe it's in the tower room, don't you? I don't know. There is only one way to find out, though. Right. I shall go and see. What do you mean by the concordance of dates, exactly? 
Don't worry about that. We already have them. They are written on the back of the message I just gave you. One last thing before you go. Be very careful. If you come across anyone, they can all potentially be spies of Mortimer or Holm. Don't ever confide in anyone because a demon can slip inside them at any moment. Wait, not all of them though. Take Washington. Especially Washington. He's been conditioned by Mortimer for years. Look at them for crying out loud. How do you explain their behavior otherwise? The most influential politicians in the Western world gather together without the least protection, without a single aid to assist them, to participate in a conference during which the guests start dropping like flies. Me, Adams, Peru, Hillsborough. Look at the number of calamities that have happened over the past few days. And not one of them has asked to leave the island? Do you find that normal? You'll see. Go up to the manor to look for the keys, and I wager not one of them will speak to you about my being in Emily's room. Do you think so? Go on, you'll see. And come back with all the objects in one go. Time is against us. And remember, the code to get out of the secret office is 6646.